Okay, I want to demonstrate how the basis functions repeat for discrete time signals. So let's consider this function here, cos of theta, and I've plotted it out here for a certain frequency, omega naught. So let's say we're going to consider that this is for cos of pi n. Let's say we're going to sample at this at integer values of n. And let's plot out what that is over here. So this is in discrete time on the right hand side and we're going to plot the samples of cos pi n. So where are they? n equals 0, we've got cos of 0 which equals 1, uh, n equals 1, we've got cos of pi, this is 2 pi, this is pi, uh, so this is our sampling time and I'm going to draw the sampling times down here because I'm going to draw other plots and use the same sampling times. Okay, so here at pi, uh, when n equals 1, we've got minus 1. At n equals 2, we've got plus 1. At n equals 3, we've got minus 1. So this is what the discrete time version of that cos waveform is. Uh, it's a waveform that oscillates. So this is one of the basis functions, it's cos pi n. This is what cos pi n looks like in discrete time. Okay, what about if we looked at a waveform which was twice that frequency? So cos 2 pi n. So we've doubled the frequency, it's cos 2 pi n instead of pi n. So this waveform is going to change twice as fast. So everywhere here where there was one period, we're now going to have two periods. Okay, so this waveform looks like this. Now, it's twice as fast, varying. Okay, so this is, now we're going to plot this and see what cos 2 pi n looks like. Okay, so cos 2 pi n, we're sampling at the same places. So we're sampling here, 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 and here. Okay, so we're sampling there, we've got, now we've got, we've got that place, we've got a 1, we've got a 1, we've got a 1, we've got a 1. So cos of 2 pi n, which is a signal that changes twice as fast, now is a discrete time signal that is a constant. Okay, so that's, these are these now different basis functions. This is cos 2, twice the frequency of this one. Okay, let's look at half the frequency of this one. So let's look at a slower one. So this waveform is cos of pi on 2n. So this means the period takes twice as long. So now this is this waveform here. And it's going to repeat. Let's, there we go. So this is this is a cos wave. Haven't maybe drawn it perfectly well here. But this is what the waveform is. Now at the sampling times, what do we get here? This one is at that sampling time, it's 1, then next sampling time, 0, next sampling time, minus 1, back to 0, back to 1, back to 0. So this is the plot in discrete time of cos pi on 2n. So we can see this one starts at 1, goes to 0, minus 1. This one is getting faster, you can see, because it's double the frequency. It's going it's switching between plus and minus. And this one's cos 2 pi n, it's constant. And what would cos of 0 be if it was cos of 0, if, if pi on 2, there was no frequency, 0 frequency? Well, this would be the same. Uh, so cos of of a zero frequency waveform would be exactly the same as this function here where it's cos of 2 pi n. So we're starting to see already that cos of zero, which would be up here, cos of zero is the same as cos of 2 pi. So what about we fill this one in cos of 3 pi on 2 n. So this is a waveform which goes through one and a half uh, cycles you know, this, where this has gone through one cycle it's taken 2 pi, and now that happens over one and a half. Okay, so now we've got uh, this waveform here, which looks like this, and then up and down, and then down and up. And 
So that's this waveform here. This is one and a half times cos 3.2, one and a half times that frequency. It's faster. You can see these waveforms are getting faster. The frequency is getting higher. So at this one here, we can see this function here goes from one to zero to minus one at the sampling times to zero. So this again, actually, is the same as cos of pi on 2n. So at those sampling times, these are the values that I'm plotting now. So this is the sampling times. We've kept the sampling times constant, and we've changed the frequency of the signal. And we go from a waveform which is constant. If, if it was cos 0, it would be constant. To cos pi on 2 is this waveform here, where it goes through zeros. Then it gets faster for cos, a faster waveform. A faster waveform again, we're back to this waveform. And cos 2 pi n, which is faster again, we're back to the original one, which is constant. So clearly, these basis functions repeat themselves. If we kept making this frequency higher and higher and higher, you would have these basis functions repeat themselves again and again and again. Okay, so hopefully you can convince yourself of that. If I went to the next frequency up here, of um, where we went another half a 2 pi up here, half a 2 pi again, uh, in terms of making this faster, we would have this waveform coming back in here. And what that means is in the frequency domain, if you had a continuous time signal, and if the continuous time signal had a Fourier transform, perhaps that looked like this, between two, uh, between zero and WC, maybe a band pass, uh, a, a band low pass waveform, if that was the Fourier transform of the continuous time signal, the discrete time signal is always going to have copies at 2 pi and 4 pi and 6 pi and so on, and of course negative 2 pi and so on. So the discrete time signal has copies of the Fourier transform centered at 2pi and 4pi and so on because the basis functions repeat.